So in this experiment, you're going to be performing different measurements, which is going to allow you to gain experience with um, different glassware that you're going to be using through the semester and also um, different measuring devices. And um, also you're going to be learning about accuracy, how accurate your measurements are depending on the device that you're using to record your measurements. So that's something that I will go over in the beginning of your experiment. And um, besides going over the accuracy of your measurements, we're also going to be talking about significant figures. How to determine how many digits are significant in a measurement, how to determine uh, how many digits are significant after you perform a calculation. So this is experiment, it's, um, it's a very simple experiment. It's the first one that you're performing. And after uh, this experiment today, um, you're going to be having like some experience using like the glassware that you're going to be using for the rest of the semester. So in part one, you're going to be given a, an index card. And I'm representing here with a blue line the length of your index card. So in part one, you're just using a ruler to determine the length of that index card. And you're going to record that measurement using metric units, which are centimeters. And you're going to record also the length of the card in inches. So you have a table in page 53 that is the one that you're going to be using to write down the measurements that you're taking for the length of your index card. Then in part two, you're going to be calibrating a thermometer. Okay? So you're going to have, it's the same, the same thing, but using hot and cold water. So you have a beaker, and you're going to fill that beaker halfway with tap water. And that one you're going to place in a hot plate. And the hot plate you're, you're using to increase the temperature of your water. So for this one, the one that you have on the left, the idea is for you to boil the water and then determine the temperature of your boiling water. Since it's going to take you some time, it's going to take some time for the water to boil. While you're waiting for the water to boil, you can be doing the second one. So again, you have a beaker, fill the beaker like halfway with ice and add some tap water in there. Okay? This is an approximation. It's not going to change like the temperature of your measurement by that much. So halfway of your beaker with ice and some water in there and you're going to determine the temperature of that one. So just place the thermometer in and you will see that the thermometer is filled with alcohol. It might be blue or green. Okay. So you're going to be looking at your thermometer until the alcohol inside the thermometer stops moving. Okay. So you have to keep looking at it until it stops moving. When the temperature is not changing anymore, then you should write down the number in your in your lab book. Now back to this one. When the water is boiling, put the thermometer in. The temperature is going to start increasing and when the alcohol in the thermometer stops moving okay, or remains constant, you should write down the temperature. Okay. You have to use the same thermometer for both. Okay. So if you're determining the temperature of your ice water, record your temperature, wait a little bit for your thermometer for the temperature to go back up. And then if this one is already boiling, then determine that one. You have a page in page 53, a table where you're going to record your measurements. You have for the ice water, that experimental number is the one that you're recording with the thermometer. Now the theoretical value, this is like the freezing point for water that should be zero Celsius degrees. 
and then we have for the boiling water this theoretical value of 100 so these theoretical numbers are given okay so you just need to find out the experimental and then you can calculate the correction theoretical minus experimental value that will give you your correction you can have a positive number it can be a negative number so if you get a negative number just write down your negative number and that's perfectly possible it perfectly fine it's possible moving on to part three in this part you're going to be using three different pieces of glassware and you're going to be determining like how accurate those uh, pieces of glassware are based on your experimental data. So first of all, you're going to find three vials and each vial has a plastic cap. So you need the vial and the plastic cap. You're going to label your three vials A, B and C. And the next step is for you to determine the mass of your empty vial with the cap and the label. So we are right here in number two. So to determine the mass, you're going to take your three vials in your lab manual and you're going to go to the mass balance. And I will show you like how to use the mass balance because it's a little bit difficult to explain it if you don't have the mass balance in front of you. But you have to put the cap on your vial and then you're going to put the vial let's start with a you have your vial a with the cap on you put it in the mass balance and you're going to copy all of the digits that the mass balance is giving you so if you have three decimal places in your measurement you're going to copy all of your three decimal places okay so if the mass of your vial a is 20.000 you're going to copy 20.000, okay? all of the digits. And then you have your mass for your vial A. You can remove the vial A from the mass balance and now you can put the second one, vial B. Remember with the cap on, you have your vial B with the cap on and you are going to copy the mass in your lab manual. And then you're going to do the same thing with vial three. Okay? So you're determining the mass for each individual vial, okay, one at a time. You're writing your numbers in page 53 in the table that you have in your lab manual. Now number four, and I will show you like what the burette is and how to set up the burette and work with it. Okay. You're going to fill a burette with this the water. And the proper way of filling a burette is just to fill, like you will see the burette, the scale starts in zero and goes down to 50. And the volume, it's increasing as you move down because the burette, it's, it's used to dispense a volume. Okay? So the amount that you're using, it's actually a difference. It's a final volume minus your initial volume. So you're going to fill your burette above the line where you have your zero and you're going to drain the excess until the volume goes down to zero you can use a beaker to collect the water that you have as an excess and you're going to have your burette with the water in your in your zero mark so you have a meniscus for the water and the bottom part of your meniscus should be aligned with the zero mark. Okay. Now you're going to take your vial A and you're going to remove the cap and you're going to dispense 25 milliliters from your burette into that vial. Okay. So you have your initial amount of water at zero and you're going to open the burette until the water goes down from zero all the way to 25 and those 25 milliliters you're transferring them into vial a like what i have right here you're not transferring those 25 into any other piece of glassware and then transferring those into the vial no from zero to 25 from the burette directly into your vial label a put the cap on your vial 
and we can move to the next step okay? so I have here like the representation of your burette zero in the beginning and you're draining from zero all the way down to 25 and that volume of water it's right there inside your vial A now the next one you're going to find a beaker try to find a beaker that it's like 50 milliliters or 100 milliliters the maximum volume you're going to approximate like 25 milliliters of water using the beaker so you're actually using the beaker to measure those 25 milliliters of water and we're using this to water for this so you have your 25 milliliters of this to water in the beaker and you're going to transfer those 25 milliliters of water that you're measuring with the beaker into your vial B. So now you have vial A with the 25 milliliters of water that you transfer from the burette. And now in vial B, you have 25 milliliters of distilled water that you transfer from your beaker. So you're using the beaker to measure about 25 and you're transferring that into your vial B. Cap vial B and let's work on vial C. You're using a graduated cylinder and in your graduated cylinder you're going to add water all the way to the mark of 25. Remember the bottom of your meniscus is the one that you're using to measure your volume. So 25 milliliters of this the water using the graduated cylinder and then you're going to transfer those 25 milliliters of water into your vial label C and cap your vial. So you have your three vials A, B and C. In the first one you have 25 milliliters of this the water that you're measuring using a burette. Then in the second one, you have 25 milliliters of this to water that you're measuring using the beaker. And then in the third one, you have 25 milliliters of water that you're, you, that you're measuring using your graduated cylinder. You have all of your three vials capped and you're going to take them with you in your lab manual and you're going to the mass balance again. Now you're going to determine the mass of your vial with the water inside. Remember you have the mass of your empty vial with the cap. Now you're determining the mass of each vial with the cap but also the water inside. So go to the mass balance and this is something that you should do always not just for this experiment. Try to use the same mass balance for all of your measurements so you don't you don't forget about which one you use for this part which one you use for that part okay? each mass balance is going to have a specific error associated with it so to avoid like having different errors in your measurement you're going to use the same one okay? so you use a mass balance for your empty vials so now you're going to use the same mass balance for your vials with the water in. So determine the mass of your vial A with the water and the cap. Write down your number. Put the second one, vial B, with the water and the cap on. Write down your number and then do the same thing with vial C, which is going to have your 25 milliliters of water and the cap on also. And write down the number. In part four, you're going to be determining the density. Density is a physical property. It's characteristic of each substance. So you're going to have different options. We have cubes and the cubes are for different materials. So you're going to be determining the density of one cube, just one. So the first thing is that the density is a derived measurement. For you to determine the density of something, 
you need the mass and the volume of that object because density is mass divided by volume. So you're going to determine the mass of your cube. For the cube that you're using, you will see that when you take the cube out of the box, it will tell you the type of material of that specific cube. So write down the type of material in your lab book. Determine the mass of your cube and write down the mass in your lab book. And to determine the volume of your cube, since it has a regular shape, and sorry because my picture, um, it moved and this is not aligned with the actual picture. But to determine the volume, we're using this equation here, the length times the width times the height is going to give you the volume of your cube. And now we are in page 54. So determine the length in centimeters, write it down, the width of your cube, write it down, and the height of your cube. And you have three distances. A volume is also a derived unit. You're using three distances to calculate the volume. The density is a derived unit because you're using a mass, which is one measurement, and also a volume to determine the density. So that's also a derived unit. So you have your three um, measurements here, the length, the width, and the height. Use the same unit for each one, centimeters for the length, centimeters for the width, and centimeters for the height. So when you multiply centimeters times centimeters times centimeters, the base is centimeters. The exponent for each one is to the power of one. So the base, you need to add the exponent. So it's one plus one plus one. Centimeters to the one, centimeters to the one, centimeters to the one. That will give you centimeters cubed. And you can use the mass of your cube and the volume to calculate the density. The mass divided by the volume will give you the density. And the unit should be grams over centimeters cubed. Now for B, in part four, you're doing A because you have the density for an object with a regular shape. And then in part B, for part four, you have the density for an object with an irregular shape, which means that you cannot determine the volume using this equation here. You cannot measure the height, the length, and the width to calculate the volume. So we calculate the volume using another technique. So you will see that we have available, it's a cylinder. There are two types. One, it's wider than the other one. And we also have graduated cylinders. These ones are plastics, so make sure that you're using a plastic graduated cylinder for this part. You don't have to take, you don't have to do both of them. Okay? I have the explanation for both, but you're choosing one or the other. So depending on which one you choose, you're going to choose a different graduated cylinder. One of them is wider than the other. So use the wider one for the wider cylinder. So you're going to add water to your graduated cylinder. And like that's the tricky part. So you are going to add enough water in each graduated cylinder, whichever you're using. Like it, it might be like halfway of your graduated cylinder. So let's say that you're doing this one. So just add a volume of water. Let's say that this graduated cylinder measures 50 milliliters. So you're going to add a volume of water that goes to 25 for example and it's important for you to write down how much water you're adding into your graduated cylinder so halfway of your graduated cylinder is 25 but you don't have to measure exactly 25 if you are a little bit more and you have 26 just make sure that you write down the exact amount of water that you have in your graduated cylinder 
Same thing for this one here. If the total volume of your graduated cylinder is 50, just add halfway, which will be 25. But again, if you have a little bit more than 25, that it's okay, or a little bit less, it doesn't matter, like 23, 24. Just make sure that you copy the exact amount in your lab manual. So, like again, about halfway, okay? 25. Now, determine the mass of your cylinder. Take your cylinder with you, go to the mass balance, and write down like the mass of your cylinder in your lab book. Then you're going to come back to your graduated cylinder with that initial volume of water. You have the mass, and this is important. Determine the mass of your cylinder before, before transferring the cylinder into the graduated cylinder okay? you don't want that cylinder to be wet when you're determining the mass because the mass of your cylinder is going to be affected by the mass of the water that you have on your cylinder too so your cylinder has to be dry before you can determine the mass okay? so you have the mass of your cylinder and now you're going to tilt your graduated cylinder and i will demonstrate tilt your graduated cylinder a little bit and transfer your metallic cylinder here the one that i have in blue transfer that one into the graduated cylinder with your initial volume of water we are determining the volume of your cylinder by water displacement you have an initial volume of water of 25 and when you transfer that cylinder in the water the volume of the water is going to increase because now you have in your graduated cylinder the volume of your water plus the volume of your metallic cylinder so your volume of the water is going to go up and you can actually determine the volume of your cylinder by that difference in your volume. Your final volume is the volume that you're going to have now once you transfer that cylinder in. Okay? And now you're going to have a new volume. So that new volume minus your initial volume, right, which is probably something close to 25 or maybe exactly 25, that's going to tell you the volume of your cylinder. So when you're transferring your cylinder into um, your metallic cylinder into the water, tilt your graduated cylinder with the water and slide that metallic cylinder through the side okay? so you don't splash any water out of your cylinder or you don't break the plastic cylinder because this metallic cylinder here is very heavy okay? so to avoid breaking this glass um the, this plastic cylinder here with your piece of metal you're going to transfer it like sliding it through the side of your of your cylinder you have the mass of your cylinder and now you're determining the volume is the difference of your volumes here your final volume once you put your metallic cylinder in the water your final volume minus that initial volume of water that you have that's going to give you the volume of this metallic cylinder here you have the mass, the mass divided by that volume is going to give you the density.